To make this rose you're going to want to start off with the centre bud and you can either buy these from local craft stores and they're made from polystyrene or you can make your own out of gum paste. If you want to make your own out of gum paste you simply just roll a bulb shape, point the top and then use a little bit of edible glue, put the toothpick in and just twist your gum paste down while it's soft and leave these to set overnight. Um, if you do want a tutorial on how to make these, um, just leave a comment sec below and then I'll upload something like that a little bit later on. But really they are quite simple to make and if you're fairly advanced in sugar craft skills, you would have come across this quite a few times. So in terms of the size, this is about just an inch tall. It's up to you kind of how big you go depending on the space you're trying to fill on your cake but I think as a standard an inch should really be good enough and then you can build your flower out from here and add as many petals as you would like. So I use a mix of cutters from different sets just to get the size that I want. Um, I'm using two sets here. So the, these plastic ones, this is the first one in the set and the second size up. These come from FMF and they are the rose petal cutters. You get a set of five in here, but I'm using the smallest and the second smallest in the set. And then these petal cutters, you'll notice they're a lot longer. So these rose cutters are quite wide across, these are a lot taller in length. These come from Vanilla Valley, they're called Valley Cutter Company and you get a set of three large rose petals. If you've only got one set and you don't want to spend the money buying different variations, you can either pull them into shape if they're the metal ones, or you can also just elongate them or widen them with your ball tool as we're going along. What I've done here, I've already cut out my petals just for ease and on the first row you need four in the smallest size. I've coloured these a primrose yellow and that is a sugar flare gel paste colouring as such but obviously colour them to whatever need be. I'm going to just take the first one Take my ball tool and just soften the edges as standard. Give a nice curve. And then just take some edible glue. Put this in a V shape across the bottom of the petal. Now the important thing here is that you want this petal to cover the tip of your central bud. So take the long piece here at the corner and you want it about two thirds of the way up above your bud. And then you can adhere it like this to make it easier. Then take your finger, pull one side all the way around so that it's almost touching the other side and then at a slight you're going to push this at an angle you're going to pull this down around like this very slightly like that and then we have the center don't worry if it's not been completely tidy because you're not going to see too much of this the important thing is, is that you pull this up and that you're not going to see your bud underneath. You're not, also, you're not going to press this all the way around, you're going to leave this very slightly open. Again, we're going to soften the edges of the three smaller petals. And allow these to curve, you don't have to be too, too gentle with these. I'll flip these over. 
And then I'm going to add the edible glue to the very edges. So you start where you see the join of the first row. Take your one petal and flatten that with the point downwards against the row, making sure that this petal is the same height or even slightly higher than the centre. Don't bring this down any lower. Press it on like here, but don't press the flaps down. And then take your next petal and slightly put this under the first one, as such. We can gently press that down. Leave this side open. Put in your next petal. Let that overlap and curve round. And remember, when you want to attach these, only press them from the bottom to join. Allow this bit to flap open. And then this one will curve in here. And this will curve around here. And we're just going to press the bottom. So you have the very centre of the bud. Okay, so we're going to take our second size up in our rose cutters and we have cut another three in this size. Again, we're going to do the same thing in terms of softening them and how we place them on the bud or the centre, but this time we're also going to curve around the edges very slightly to start giving the rose that very realistic look. So, what we can do, if you take a softer pad, so this is like a little foam pad and this is your softer side pad. Again, you can get these in most craft stores. Take your petal and just drag your ball tool through the centre. That's going to give you this really nice little cup shape. Right, on the third row, as we're doing here, these will only be slightly cupped. As we go on to the larger rose petals, we'll actually leave them to dry slightly in a cupped form and then place them around the centre. Flip this over so we have the back and take your toothpick and just very slightly roll the edge over. Just a tiny bit on both sides. There we go, we've curved both sides. Again, we're looking where one of your joins is, where the opening of your petal falls. I'm going to take this making sure it's above the top of your rose. You don't want this to be lower or it will look really strange. And leave this to rest here. Tuck the next one under as such. Leave in an opening and then tuck the next one under here. And what I like to do to leave it really realistic is try and Try and have these open in on the edges as much as possible, falling away from the centre because as you get bigger, the more they fall away from the centre, the more realistic this rose is going to look. It will look like the petals are falling away, the bud is opening, and in, depending on what stage of bloom they are, some might really be falling off at the very end. And I will actually also show you how to do a few really pretty details on a fallen petal just to make your designs look really realistic. But there you go, so we have that one. You can also um, slightly pinch these corners as well to add a really pretty effect. The next size up is in our valley cutter set. And these are slightly longer. 
Okay, and here I have done five. I've cut out five of these petals. Sometimes you might need an extra one if there's a gap, if your rose looks a bit strange to you. It really doesn't matter. Just cut out an extra petal and fit that in. There's really no strict law into how you do these. But this is just kind of a basic. It's generally <clears throat> one small, three smaller, another three smaller, and then we go up to five. You tend to work in odd numbers, but some, sometimes it doesn't work out that way, and I really wouldn't worry too much. So the difference in these is that we are going to set them aside a little. And I have made this gigantic spoon petal former. These are just plastic spoons I've just bought in the supermarket and I've super glued them on to an old um, cake box actually. And yeah, it's, it's just, it just allows you to dry a lot of roses at the same time, or petals shall I say. So again, now we're also going to texture these now and that's how you get this really realistic look on your roses. So again, soften the edges. And, you know, don't be too, too overly gentle, be fine. Making sure your ball tool is partly on the mat and on the edge of the petal. But I really like to go over these. Now you also have the option, when you are doing this, to use a rose veiner. Sometimes I use these, other times not so much. It does add a lot, um, it adds an extra step to the process. And again, if you're making a lot of roses and you're trying to give your brides a reasonable price, this might be an unnecessary extra cost to them. But it is nice. I mean, for your own projects, if you're doing something just for yourself or a competition work, then yes, definitely go for it and use the veiners. They add a lovely effect, but again, it does, it does add an extra step. So what we can do, these are from Squire's Kitchen. This is your rose tea leaf. Texture your edge first, place your petal into the form, um, and use a little bit of cornstarch if you do find it sticking. Give it a good press down, and then and you take this out. You actually have a really lovely effect. This will show up more once you dust them, but it does, I mean, it does look incredibly realistic and really pretty. So you also are welcome to do that to all your leaves and um, petals as you go as well but for the purpose of this video I'll skip that step it just shows you what it looks like so once you've softened your edges what I like to do is texture them what that means is I will take a piping nozzle and I will start to add a little cuts just a few not on all of them, you can leave some without, you can do some just on the edge. But this will really start to make your flower look a bit more realistic. Once we've done this, again, take your ball tool and just drag this down to make a cup shape. Take your toothpick and just curve the very edges as such. So there we go, we have these curved. Um, I will take my smaller one, then you want to take this and you want to allow your little curves to hold on to the top edge of your spoon very gently and then we can just push this curving with our finger and we're going to allow them to set up for about I'd say 20 minutes if you're using satin ice if you're using Squire's Kitchen paste maybe 5 minutes that will set up really quickly you don't want it to be rock hard when you get back to it because if you try and attach them they'll just completely snap um, but you want them to be somewhat firm so they don't completely lose their shape. 
I'm going to leave those to set up. And while you're waiting on those, you can do your next set. So in our, one of our larger cutters, we have another five cut out. And it will be the same process exactly again, but I might texture these even more. I'll make them look even more worn because these are on the outside. They've been more exposed to the elements. So let's really make these look realistic. And the whole idea is that the more texturing you do, then when you come to dust them with colour, that dust will sit in those little grooves and crevices that you've made. And they'll look really beautiful. Let these set up a bit. I'm going to take our third row. So they're still quite soft. You can see if I do this. They're going to move back down, but they are holding their shape. They're not going completely flat, so that's kind of what we're looking for. We'll take the five that we have here. And we'll put the next row onto our rows. So, same method as before. Only putting glue on the very edges of these petals just at the bottom, do not go any higher, you don't need to because this is the bit that will be exposed. It's just a small amount so that it attaches to the center that we've already made. Again, take our rows, we're gonna look for our opening. Push this, now because these are longer, you will notice they will now sit at the bottom, closer to the bottom of your central bud, but also making sure that they are still taller than the centre. As soon as these start to go lower, your rows will look really strange. Leave a side open and put the next one in and we'll overlap this. It does get a bit fiddly they'll start to flop down slightly so you just got to hold on to them as you're going curve it around it's almost a third of the way overlapping onto the next one here now this first one that we attached I'm going to have this open slightly I'm going to open this one that we've just put on and put the last one in and tuck this underneath and then tuck them both here. Just make sure they're atta it's attached at the bottom so we can now turn this upside down and just make sure every petal is firmly attached and then we have our next layer and again this is where you can go in and you can pinch the edges, you can manipulate it, we might want to curl this one down a bit more Curl this one down and and start to start to open it up so allow them to fall away slightly and look a bit more open now these are not gonna dry very nicely if we just stick them in and hope for the best we need something to form them if this was done on a wire you could hang it upside down but I don't tend to do that often because then it becomes a bit too closed and you find you end up having to add a lot more petals so what I like to do is I've taken these little plastic um, cupcake cases that you can kind of get in most stores really they're just reusable cases and I've cut the bottom so that my toothpick will fall through and then I just drop this really gently into the cup and it will help hold its shape and then what I would then do if you don't have a shelf divider with holes in where you can sit this on top, you can either get a stack of two books, push them together and put this into the gap and it will sit. Or I also have a gap in some of my shelving units, so I just put them along the shelf and let them set up there. So I'll go and do that. We'll leave it to set up and you're now going to leave this to set up for a good couple of hours before we're going to add the next row of petals. Okay, so we've let that set up for a bit. Now we're going to attach our next set 
of petals that have been sitting here on our petal former. So again it's the same process and as you can see they have some movement, they're soft but they're keeping their shape. Again we're going to look for the join, you can see here we have a gap this is our next join. We're going to get the very end of the petal so it touches the bottom of your rose, covering any of the white that's left over and touch that to the thing. Leave one side open and curve the next one the same underneath. It's going to curve in or overlap just under halfway. Do the same with the next one, leaving that open, tucking that in, securing to the bottom and then pushing that round. Hold it from the bottom, make sure they don't fall, try not to push in those nice curves that you've just created as they've been forming, so try and hold it from the bottom as much as possible and we're going to curve this round. Now with this one I'm not going to worry about tucking the last one underneath. I'm just going to wrap that round so that it's almost a spiral. So there we have the fourth set of petals. So what you now want to do is take the next size up in your cutter set and we're going to cut out about six to seven. I'd say do seven just to be safe. So again, you can put this in a petal former or hang it up, um, sorry, a, f a little flower former to keep its shape or we can hang it upside down if it is on a wire. I'm going to get on and cut the next row and we'll do exactly the same thing we did. It was the next size up, so I'll show you now. This is the next size up that we have in our set of three in the valley cutters. See the difference? This was the last one we used. This is the next one. It's a lot wider at the top, which will give you a nice shape. And we will do the same process as we've done with this row. Leave them to set for a good couple of hours and then wrap them around and again in the same fashion. So we have our larger petals. We have six here. They've been setting up nicely on the spoons. I would actually like them to be a little firmer set than they actually are. They're a little bit too soft but again for the purpose of the video and time I'm just going to show you now how I attach them and pretty much what the flower will look like as it's finished. So again we're just putting glue on the very bottoms in a V shape. Take our rows Look for the first gap that we have, it's going to go right at the bottom and fit and again make sure that your petal is higher than the centre of your rose and we're going to press this down at the bottom. We'll attach one side, we'll attach one side here and lift this out and do the same process that we've done with all the others, making sure to not press in the centre where you've done your cup shape. Again, it's quite fiddly, but you get used to it. You'll find a good workaround. Make sure you're attaching these right to the bottom of your rose. Sometimes you have to kind of turn it upside down a little bit just to help hold. And there we have it. So I've only added, I have six, but I've only added um, five. Five was absolutely enough. Sometimes you have to kind of move these around a little. You'll look at it and you'll think, I want that a bit tighter, that's fine. Just move it as you see fit. And again, just 
go in and manipulate the roses so that they've got a nice little curl and the shape that you want.